Welcome to the Out There channel, live stream 423. Oh, actually, it's the 700 upload. So I'll play the birthday cake after. I'm searching. <laughs> I totally forgot. I'm <laughs> loving. Happy birthday to Out There channel. I'm searching. I'm loving, I'm finding love. I'm Dark side. Let the beat control your body. There's a lot of hours watching many years, I'd say. Hello, good to be back. Uh, but I forgot to play the birthday cake. <laughs> CPU is a wee bit cluggy at the moment. Yeah, oh, let's see if we can play the birthday cake. Just uh, keep the tradition going. Uh, that's not it. I don't think. Uh, let's see, which one was it? I think that's the men in black one. Uh, here we go, let's see if it plays. 700 upload. I wonder if we can get the music playing. I had some trouble with it last time, didn't we? I've changed the weight cues. There you go. Here comes another alien, it's going to be dropped off. That's one big cake. And there's a UFO getting slowly cooked. And I pre made these probably a year ago. To separate each stage as we go. I'm not sure if that's loud enough or not. That'll do. Do do do. Won't be a na na, don't be a na na. Which is today's show. We've got plenty of nanas. <laughs> this Kiwi's going to sap some of Boom. Kiwis are dangerous. Don't mess with kiwis. So, I was meant to have an interview today, and the so-called professional blocked me, and didn't tell me a damn thing what was going on. Very strange. But, uh, yeah, we're exposed so-called more professionals today. <laughs> Yeah, how do we stop the music here? The old system. Here we go. I still like my control better. Control panel better. Yeah. 
so many buttons you could press wrong on that little one over there on the main screen. But I think it's all working all right. I'll just do a check on the audio. Check on the audio. Okay, pretty good. Okay. So yeah, back to normal stuff. Uh, today we're talking about into the OT channel live four two three. Dolan and the fools that follow him. And I uh, have a UFO idiots promoting bullshit as usual. <laughs> ah, yes, let's see how we go today. So all we get is idiots and ufology scammers. Okay. Where's the one I normally have up? Okay, that one. Go away. So the subs are slowly going up. Not sure what's happened there, but I think BitChute changed the way people search. Oh, it's just getting more and more busy. Um, but either way, it kind of sucks. Uh, that we used to get 100 new subs a week at the start of the year, and that's nothing. 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 Nothing is the old English sloppy way of saying it. <laughs> A uh, bad habit from mum's side, because she's British. My dad's got perfect English and my mum's got sloppy English. How's that even possible? <laughs> and they live in the same neighbourhood. Um, so yeah, you are what your environment is and what you pick up from your parents, I guess. We are programmed. That we have to unprogram bad things <laughs> that we get taught. Um, let's see, anything else I was meant to mention? So, yeah, I was meant to do an interview talking about the Calvine being researched and the guy didn't show up. He was a no show. But it doesn't matter. Uh, we don't need to uh, interview other pseudo investigators, do we? Um, but. It's nice to have a few guests on that want to talk about UFOs, the sightings and stuff like that. But more credible people we need, you know. But at the moment it makes you wonder who's credible in the ufology world. Corbell we know is not. Dolan looks like he's not. Cameron, whatever his name is, Grant Cameron is not. All these people that keep polluting. Uh, is that stopped playing? That's going to lose CPU here. Let me just check something. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I just stopped. Okay, I need to go back out. Back to the desktop. <laughs> yes, by all means, do like and share and all that. <laughs> um, so this started off, I guess. Um, where do we begin? So apparently, Dolan's boasting that he's got uh, classified documents. The doc, uh, the classified vision that the Congress people got. So apparently, they got one with more information on it than the public one. And so I'll let um, Stephen from Truth Seekers talk about it, 
because he nails it straight on the head rather than me repeat it. And, uh, yeah. Um, there's no reason why he doesn't get arrested by FBI for what he's doing or claiming, and Stephen will tell you more about that. Uh, looks like we've got a message coming. Don't care, don't care. So Stephen has put out this little video yesterday, and I'll just play a clip of it. Come to the show. All right. Oh, he's got loud music. Mm -hmm classified version of the ufo report we just got today i got notice from several people that uh jimmy church of fade to bull is also claiming to got a leaked copy of that classified the classified version of the ufo report the one they released publicly there was two versions an unclassified version for civilians and for the general u.s public and then there's a classified version that was for, you know, members of Congress or the military that contains certainly more information and information that is most likely of a classified nature because it involves national security. I want to pop on here and just talk about how ridiculous this is. First of all, Richard Dolan and Jimmy Church ought to call a lawyer right now because they're either lying or they're extremely naive and extremely lying extremely in legal jeopardy right now they're in legal jeopardy right now for claiming that they're in possession of classified documents that were leaked to them so there's three possibilities here either these two guys are lying and they did not get the classified version of this ufo report or they did. If they truly got a classified version of that UFO report, then both of them are right now probably getting investigated by the feds for making they publicly said that they got a leaked version of the classified documents. I don't you know, I expect this from Jimmy Fade to Bull Church, right? <laughs> After all, he just had Sarah R. Adams on his show who was selling med bed sessions. For two hundred and fifty dollars, but I sure don't expect this from someone as educated and intelligent as Richard Dolan. So, for the benefit of those who aren't aware, I'm going to explain a few things. First of all, anybody that would be dumb enough to send a copy of classified documents, this report or anything else that's that's classified to either Richard Dolan or Jimmy Church would face prosecution and get up to 10 years in jail for leaking those documents to these two clowns. Sorry, clowns is a strong word, at least for... Nah, nah, you know what? I'm not going to take it back. Uh, <laughs> first of all, both of them should call a lawyer right now. They should both call a lawyer right now, a criminal defense attorney. They both need one. Because those two clowns, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, they're clowns for doing this. You're a clown if you are actually, tell, if, especially if you're telling the truth and you really got real classified U.S. documents. You're a clown leaked to you. them. <laughs> because first of all, let's say John Smith emailed both these clowns a copy of this report. That guy who emailed those report, that report to both these guys is facing 10 years in prison. Next, both Jimmy Church and Richard Dolan are required by law to report to the U.S. government who leaked those documents to them. <laughs> now, they can hide behind journalistic sourcing if they want to, but I don't think that's going to work out so well for them. And let's be clear, the U.S. government, the DIA, the DEA, the CE, CIA, the Department of Defense, the Pentagon... They've got excellent cybersecurity people. They're going to be able to track who sent documents to these two guys if someone indeed did do it. Further, clowns, let's say not guys. <laughs> Joe Blow is a congressional aide and got copies of this classified report. 
And then he emailed those documents to John Smith, who then emailed them to Jimmy Church and Richard Dolan. Both Joe Blow and John Smith are facing 10 years in prison. If Richard Dolan and Jimmy Church were stupid enough to forward these emails, these documents to anybody else, then they're both facing 10 years in prison for doing so. So we, we really have three choices here. Either these guys are lying and they don't have shit. These guys truly did get a report and it's fake. Or these guys truly did get a report and it's genuine. If it's genuine, they're both facing criminal prosecution right now. And I just, I for one cannot believe that these guys were dumb enough to publicly say, I got leaked classified documents. <laughs> these two make very well be getting knocks on their doors or inquiries from law enforcement in the next few days. If they haven't already, let, I, I just, I don't understand the logic of these two. Is it just a bragging game? Like I got the classified version. If that's the case, they're idiots because they're still inviting. They're still inviting the feds to investigate them and find out if they really do have these classified documents or not. <laughs> Folks, you're required by law. If you get classified documents and you know they're classified, and obviously these two clowns know they're classified because they're saying, I got the classified documents. They're both required by law to report that to federal law enforcement or to local law enforcement at least. And then local law enforcement or federal law enforcement is going to follow up and find out who leaked these documents to these two and prosecute them in federal in, in, in a federal court. They're going to face federal criminal charges for leaking these documents. So do I believe that these two have the real deal? No, no. And there's reasons I think that. There are fake documents purported to be the classified documents that are floating around. But Richard, the expert researcher, Dolan, should know he should know that this fake that's floating around is completely and totally fake now there's a lot of reasons why he should know that he's a much more educated and learned and experienced researcher than i am he should know that the fake that's rolling around is fake i have a feeling that both these clowns got the fake and they just wanted bragging rights i got uh, i'm not sure when they find the fake or not Fake classified UAP reports. Let's see what comes up. I would have thought Reddit would have come up. Uh, classified. Do we have to put Pentagon in front? Uh huh. So it's unclassified vision there. says it's unclassified and it was sent to Congress so um, who got the classified vision then <laughs> obviously not Congress surely so it has me beat uh, well, there'd be a classified vision. For whose eyes? I don't know. I thought maybe the Congress got uh, more explanation of what we were expecting of the, uh, the case breakdown, the video breakdown, right? Took more details about which one was solved with the balloon and all that business so the question is who's producing a fake document 
probably should go to jail. <laughs> um, let's say UFO report there. Let's try UFO. And put that in quotes. And documented numerous requests received by NSA. <laughs> Uh, unclassified to come up again. Even though we asked for classified only, Google still puts up garbage, right? It's still preloaded with all the top uh, searches, so you probably have to go to page two and beyond, probably, where the real stuff is. Uh, or limit it to, let's see, a week maybe. 24 hours, let's see what comes up then. Nineteen hours ago, Pentagon set to release government sanctioned report which will give some information on UFOs. Isn't it what we just got though? UFO report left much to to be desired. Well, classified briefing. But it doesn't talk about report, does it? Uh, classified information. Now, uh, here we go. 19 hours ago, NS, uh, NASA Administration Bill Nelson says he has read the classified vision of the U U US intelligence report on the series of UFO sightings by Navy pilots. Yes, so what's that? Probably a nothing burger again, probably, where they can't say anything, right? Uh, not the bouquet. The bouquet video. Mark Hamill. All these nobodies. <laughs> They're nobodies now. Yeah, so transcript. Nope. So, nothing about Dolan being arrested yet. <laughs> Maybe it's coming. Maybe tomorrow's news. So, uh, it's still the weekend in America, isn't it? Uh, maybe it takes a wee while for the FBI to listen to UFO podcasts. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I don't know if there's a so-called fake version out there, but... Uh, probably is on Reddit, I suppose. I don't know. Same as the Wilson doc document, right? They said they got it from, was it Mitchell's, the spaceman's office, and Black Vault nailed it, I think. Uh, reads like a, a script for a TV plot. And after he died, someone got hold of it and said, I oh, have a read of this. Sounds top secret. And Dolan made a few thousand dollars out of it. Ho, ho, ho. And it went nowhere, of course, as we all said it would. 
because we knew it was fake. Didn't make any sense about the inductions in it. It would make sense if it was for a TV show though. Uh, what's this one? Capital Riot, what a bunch of bollocks. So the FBI wasted their time in the wrong places. <laughs> Some guys just walked through the halls and uh, sat in chairs, that's all they did. They didn't do anything bad. Unlike uh, all those riots in the city where they burnt down places. Double standards in America is just shocking and corruption. Makes me sick, actually. I don't know how Americans live in America anymore. I'm glad I'm in New Zealand. Away from all those nut jobs. Anyway, um, I guess uh, Stephen's moved out to the woods. <laughs> Living with the bears and the fish. So, yeah, I'll just post the link to that so you can go and listen to all of it if you want. But, yeah, uh, if you've seen the document, I haven't. But obviously it's out there, uh, someone will probably be able to find it. I guess people email and stuff, right? The same document as everyone else got, probably. Steve on Dalton. There we go. So also, Steve, we been putting off, is this other one that he did. So let's uh, cue that one up and have a laugh at that one. Are either jealous of your success or happy for it. I am one to be happy for other people's success. Can I be jealous at the same time? Sometimes I'm like, damn, that dude got a really great new job or whatever, you know. I'm not usually one to be jealous over people's money or things like that, though. I'm more jealous of people's accomplishments. You know, like, oh, uh, my old musician friend just released a new album because I know how hard that is to to do, right? And I'll be jealous, very like, true. wow. Especially if the album starts getting a lot of attention, right? Or doing very well. FGRAF72 says, make a buck, Stephen. I'm trying. I am here yeah. trying to praise the cash, right? That's what I'm we here trying to do. We all felt. I am here trying my very best to... Truth, truth doesn't make money, mate. That's for sure. If you want to make money, you've got to be a corrupt politician, corrupt lawyer, whatever. <laughs> so... Um, You can see this uh, goes on a few bit here, but I suppose we should introduce it. Doing this uh, musical guest. And I really try to get enough guests to do it every show, uh, but I didn't get many takers and... Uh... Hey, I tried to get a guest on. I have the same problem, Stephen. Some people even were giving me copyrighted music, and I was getting copyright strikes, <laughs> which is kind of not something I want to do here, you know. And then I, have I got a copyright claim on a video I did like four years ago, and it was from the Free Music Archive, and I got the link to it that so says it's um, CC, where you can use it as long as you use a link in your description, which I have. And Google allows that to be put against you. <coughs> what happened is someone else has taken that and combined it into their own video and managed to put it into the contacts ID illegally and uh, tried to take out everybody, right? Everybody has to fight the copyright claim. And you have to have it sit there. Uh, they try to steal the money, right? But it sits in a separate account until it clears after 30 days because they won't release it manually these people uh, i don't know it's this whole scumbag system google hate it and i can't even post a comment to anybody's youtube anymore doesn't even matter if it's a reply or a thing i've complained to um team youtube about it 
and the comment just vanishes. So I've tried it on my helper accounts uh, to test it and it vanishes and I know it's not going to spam and all that sort of business. So they're un doing underhanded stuff to try and to cripple my channel still. And you can see there the subs were uh, last live stream up to 2513 and suddenly they're back down to about 210 and now it's crawled up to it was at to 212 yesterday now it's back to 2511 so what the hell's going on there uh, it's just not right is it it's just not on yeah it's just not on but anyway, if you want to watch me, you watch me. Can't say how long I'm going to last at this though. It's getting depressing. I have to trim it out. Um, you know, so I thought uh, in lieu of a musical guest, we would take submissions uh, from anybody who has something cool and artistic that they would like to share uh, in video format, preferably. But if you have a song, I, okay. here we go, Don't friends. Let's welcome tonight's special guest. Oh no. There you go. Oh, he's got it loud too, isn't he? Looks pretty cool though. We'll play it without the music. Hey, Mr. Grey. But they're more green. They're Mr. Greens. <laughs> So he's got some dance music. Uh, I'm not too sure how appropriate it is for dancing aliens for a UFO show. <laughs> yeah. So you can go and watch that next time when I post a link anyway. I won't play it all. Uh, it's probably copyrighted, <laughs> as he just said. <laughs> uh, anyway, just move on. Uh, so what's he got to say now? Uh, that is, uh, if nothing else, it's extremely artistic and interesting. That's what I will say. And mm. it's fun to watch. Uh, so uh, if it you're just joining us now, sick. we have been covering the strange saga of Emery Smith's uh, ex fiance coming out and spilling the beans on all his fakery, fraudery, and bullshit. He literally lives a life of bullshit. And she... <laughs> Nails him for it throughout nice. three videos now. She's up to three videos now. I think <laughs> it's something like four and a half hours now. But don't worry. So, Emery Smith, uh, he's the one that uh, works with Corey Good and all those other frauds uh, out there. Let's see. Let's see if we can find information on UFO topic. So, television host for Gaia. Uh, alien autopsy, which we know was uh, fake. Time travel, which has to be fake. And uh, no, that's just nonsense. Uh, cosmic disclosure sounds and vaccines sounds up there with uh, conspiracies. USO US UFO research begins. Cosmic disclosure. That's got to be Wilson, isn't it? So, yeah, David Wil Wilcock. So and. Uh, So obviously they're on that one. Have we got any samples to play? No. They won't let you play samples. It's all about money. So you see, it's all about money then. Tiny mummy alien appearance. Henry Smith. Is he even a doctor? Was that fake fake qualifications? Uh, let's see. Let's stick the word fraud on the end. See what comes up. Of 
UFA believe, uh, believe in community. Let's see what they got to say. <laughs> Most of the UFA believe in community. It's not so much believing, it's uh, non critical thinkers that are a problem. Do not accept uh, Henry Smith's. Smith is authentic. He has posted pictures of himself as a medical lab and evidence of his past, but these were exposed as stock pics <laughs> uh, from a photo library with his uh, picture photoshopped into the stock image. <laughs> Caught out, you lame bastard. <laughs> uh, pardon the French. Uh, the only thing in his favour is, like Bob Lazar, people find him likeable. <laughs> uh, yeah. A fraud, stay away from people like him. Oh, uh, no, they seem to attract him. Uh, Tyler Klotner is a fraud and he's got 2 million followers. If you want to know the truth, uh, instead I recommend looking at people like Dr. Jacobs, Kyla Turner, and you should recommend the Out There channel, and especially I suggest reading The Allies of Humanity. Uh, hi there, he is a whistleblower in the UFO community, so when you hear whistleblower, uh, you know it's going to be 99% BS. <laughs> The buff link, uh, you'll have know some of his claims and work experience. <laughs> How legit is the work of Dr. Stephen Greer regarding your face? I will admit that I have not read all of Greer's books or watched his videos, but I have read and seen, I think, I can formulate a valid opinion of his work. Greer makes a lot of fantastical claims, or fantastic, whether or not any truth is among them. Well, I can tell you it's not. <laughs> I'm sure I pay for this. Question 1. Do UFOs exist? UFOs increasingly exist. There's no secret or doubt about it. None is a fact. <laughs> they exist and don't exist. They only exist in your mind. That's what they should have said. <laughs> well, that's a possibility. Do you actually, uh, when you think of UFOs, are you expecting to see one? You know, uh, normally the most trustable sources are ones that are not even in the UFO field and they come across something extraordinary, right? Um, so they're the ones that are more interesting, unless uh, later on it turns out they're faking it to make a story for a newspaper to get some money. So they're talking about other things. Yeah, no, no answer is his um, question. This is a great question. The answer is they're all bunk. Why are most UFO or alien video pictures grainy? So I must have gone past the, the main question. Let's see. Is there a click point? Uh, where does it end? Is that what we got? Related questions, okay. So only two people answered, is it? Anyway, it was quite funny, interesting about the stock photographs. I didn't know about that. Because I never follow these ones. Uh, I let other people do all these ones, like uh, Good, Wilcox, um, Hey, we got some side chat on. How's it going? Uh, hold me. Love me. Uh, you don't get no love here. This is UFA filled. <laughs> it's all about hate. You should know that. <laughs> yes, uh, meditate and uh, summon UFOs. It's like a born again hippie method. Yeah, I, I know an, uh, Il Grey, he's a wee bit of a um, hippie from the old days, uh, 1960s, and he doesn't believe in too much of that, although he's not too sure. He did uh, do an experiment with CE5 before he had a visitation in his house where they took him and his wife saw it as a witness, so 
He seemed to believe that there might be something to see five, and I said, no, you can't say that, because you had a lot going on in that, those two weeks. A, he had started MUFON, and he was investigating an induction, a contactee case, and other cases, uh, which were meant to be really good. Plus, he released information about his mum's underground base. Now, it doesn't mean that maybe it was a black ops craft that emerged with his house and walked through the wall. Maybe they've got a way to do that now. Uh, if the military had that kind of technology, right, to be able to walk through buildings, um, could explain uh, that they could walk in and... and kill any president in the world right anyone any leader any any nuclear base or anything they could just walk straight through plant some bombs and blow it up so is it uh, aliens or black ops perhaps they wanted to clamp down on him releasing see if he had any information uh, more than he had said in public about the underground base um uh, if you if you don't if you not heard the underground base story, I suggest you go and have a watch of it. I'll just find the link for it since I've mentioned it from the side chatter. <laughs> uh, but it's one of my um, first uh, interviews actually. I was meant to do an interview today, something similar probably, and it never happened. People chicken out. Uh, underground. Maybe it's not the right keyword. <laughs> uh, here you go. Uh, underground secret base in Earl's Mum. Uh, it was a good interview. Uh, you'll enjoy it if you never listened to it before. Earl Grey and the underground base. Now, this sounds very legit. His mum actually was the secretary for Howard Hughes. Well, one of them. He had several secretaries. Ones that actually did the work and ones that you had uh, romantic affairs with. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a lot of good stuff on my channel. Um about this sort of stuff, real stories like, um, and uh, she met um, Von Brown underground. Now we're talking about a base that's more underground, or close to it, that somewhere in the desert, and unlike, uh, she said it was like a desert, with like a, a, sh a shack on it, and then we walked into the shack and it was an elevator, but like you see in the movies, right? <laughs> Uh, this is going back a few years, back into the 70s, uh, when she was telling the story to her son, who became a MUFON chief investigator. But anyway, I don't talk to Earl anymore, because he decided to break contact with me. But that's his choice, uh, not mine. But maybe he'll come back one day. Realise how stupid he was to outcast me like he has done but that's the problem with UFO uh, field they're so intertwined with the left politics that they don't see uh, false statements and lies and all that they sort of I don't know people are always blue team versus red team mentality especially in America me I like to sit in the middle and uh can see some lies from both sides, you know. But um, one side is more biased than the other. Uh, in the last f few years, anyway. But uh, it's the sort of thing that sort of gets your channel deleted if you start talking about it. <laughs> um, what's dumb? Dumb, dumb, dumb. Not sure that relates to that comment, but... Um, yeah, what did we get up to? Emery Smith, we're just trying to see if we could find anything before we have listened to what the Stephen has got to say about him. Okay, Corbell even said, 
Jeremy Smith is a total and complete charlatan fraud. But isn't Jeremy Corbell a fraud as well? Uh, do people think he's just gullible or trying to make money out of ufology? Or does he actually believe in it? I think sometimes people believe in it and then they get taken, get taken with the fame and money, maybe. Uh, a lot of people said he actually believes in UFOs, but uh, how can you, if you've seen my last episode, how can you say that your favourite channel is security uh, and, and say that you knew that he was faking stuff? Makes no sense to me, right? You want to watch someone that's got the real news, never tells a lie, and brings you what they can do without breaking classifications, right? And, of course, today's show was talking about Dolan that was bringing you either fake documents or he was breaking the government's law by receiving uh, classified information. Uh, unless you're a reporter and it's a whistleblower, um, then unless you're actually a reporter, I don't think... Uh, Dolan would be classed as a reporter, a book writer, UFO historian, that's it. Not a UFO researcher, and he's not a, he's a UFO talking host, he's not a reporter by any sense. So, yeah. But, yeah, you go, you got Cool Bell calling out other frauds, that's got to tell you something. And here's Stephen, he said he's got a new podcast on it, former France says he's a fraud, so we're going to listen to some of that. So, you know, that's how you do background searches on people, you just got to use the right keywords and all that. And frauds always eventually get uh, called out, you know, like uh, Tyler got called out with me looking into him. And also Third Phase of the Moon have been called out with their stuff. But they, then they come back and say, they've changed. Um, but uh, then they get caught out doing other stuff and promoting CGI and deceptive stuff again. If people will change, you don't keep repeating the same thing, right? You go and get some credible video analysis, uh, debunkers to check out the footage before you put up. You don't just wing it up and say, oh, it could be a balloon, it could be a plane... But we're not experts, we'll let you make up your mind. Uh, what's the point of that? <laughs> and of course they get them, they, they, patrol, they patrol there. They look around the, uh, YouTube, or well, they've got helpers to, to find this stuff, and then they try and post a comment saying, can we use it on our stream, and we'll give you a plug back. That's uh, duplicating what's really on YouTube. <laughs> So, um, unless they're adding to it, which they're not. Like, um, <clears throat> they could say, we're going to have the uh, experts look at it and break it down, but they say they're not experts, right? <laughs> so, it's this uh, hearsay, what they say it is. Um, they don't do no enhancements. They don't use any of the apps, like Plane Finder. They don't plug into the date and time and all that and say oh yeah there was nothing in the sky from what we can see on the apps you see what i mean um they haven't changed if they changed they would be doing all that right they'd be um involving credible people for the analysis and just be hosts and present it and not actually give their opinion because they said they're not experts <laughs> They got no qualifications. They got no degrees. Um, like they, they could hire Mark T, T. Antonio, but it'll cost them a thousand dollars an hour <laughs> uh, to analyze the footage for them. Uh, There's all sorts of ways they could uh, make themselves credible, but they don't. They go and buy a colour night vision and then film some search and rescue off the coast there and they still use it in their intros, saying it's a USO coming out the sea, which is nonsense. You know, back to uh, Emery Smith, we just found out that he was faking Photoshop 
pictures of him in the lab. So he's not even a doctor, clearly. He's one of these guys that makes uh, fake qualifications up. <laughs> okay, you bookmarked Earl Grey for later. Yeah, cool. Um, just carry on here because we've got a bit to cover, as you can see, again. Don't worry, I listened to all of it, so you don't have to. And uh, we're going to share <laughs> uh, her latest video and talk about it tonight. But I have to cut the first 40 minutes or so, or we're never going to get through it. Uh, I think Stephen needs to cut back on the chain smoke, and his voice is sounding really worse there. <laughs> uh, you can always tell a smoker by their voice box, can't you? <laughs> Um, what's that guy from the Aliens movie? He was a bit of a chain smoker, wasn't he? He tried to give up and, and he had to go back on it because uh, he was so addicted to it um, it made his hate, uh, heart go out of control. <laughs> There's some story like that online anyway. Normally you don't go cold turkey if you're a chain smoker. You normally cut it back slowly, slowly, slowly so it doesn't affect your system. Uh, like all drugs, right? Uh, well, actually, I'm only going to... Um, we're going to come in... Because um, I don't smoke. I never smoked, and a lot of family have died from smoking. So, yeah, I'm always anti-smoking now. So, uh, expect me from time to time to point out this sort of stuff. Right around 30 minutes. So, I'm going to bring you up to speed. In the first 30 minutes of the video, she details after... A year, I think, of speaking to him on the phone constantly, then becoming a uh, girlfriend and boyfriend, and then engaged and planning children over the phone before ever meeting. Uh, she finally flies out and meets Emery Smith at some very nice hotel in a college town somewhere. She wouldn't say where. And while she was there, her and Emery Smith did the boom boom. Yeah. They got busy. Yeah. Now, what does he look like, this guy, anyway? Um, I forgot to bring up a photograph of him. Henry Smith. Kind of strange name, isn't it? Sounds like uh, Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. <laughs> from the old classic one. Henry Smith, Henry Smith. Henry Smith, yeah. Um, that's not how you spell his name, is it? M U R I. That should be a. Uh... Mind you, there's going to be a few Emery Smiths, aren't there? So is that the UFO man? Let's have a look. Oh, surely not. Well, that's not him. Surely, is it? He looks like a rugby player that's had his head squashed. That can't be him. <laughs> no. Cosmic closure. Maybe it is. <laughs> it looks like he got his head stomped in too many rugby scrums. Uh, I'm not too sure. Go your TV. So you must be on big bucks here. Scientist, which they said the photographs were fake. Inventor, bullshitter. Explorer, bullshitter. TV host and Gaia TV. Washington District. Uh, regenerative medicine. Stem cells. Anti-aging technologies. Uh, yeah. If you're a doctor doing that, why would you be on TV as a host? Uh, there seems to be like a conflict there, doesn't it? Um, still. Is that in there as well? It must be. I 
Is that the only picture we got? There must be more of them. Okay, is it the same guy? But aged? Yep, must be. Still got strange eyes. Um, uh, that's him there. There's smoke on his face. Uh, yep, that's definitely him, isn't it? Uh, maybe that's his first wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He'd be banging a few girls, I'd say. <laughs> uh, look, look how many would do Tyler Klockner, right? <laughs> Tyler just seems to have all the Airhead culty females chasing him. Don't care that he's a hoaxer. And it'll be the same with this guy too. Anyway. Anyway, first picture has already put me off him. <laughs> you can tell he's a hoaxer. So I guess after talking to him on the phone for an hour, uh, she flies out to a nice hotel He's uh, saying things to the, the hotel staff, like, can you get my wife's bag, calling her his wife as soon as she gets there. Very strange, uh, you know, but they're there for a, a weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I guess, uh, you know, I guess he gave it to her, friends. He got to give it to her. Yeah. They did the nasty. <laughs> they bumped uglies. They did the boom boom in this hotel room. Uh, but sometime around Sunday, she begins to be suspicious, and she mentions that uh, in the first half hour that Emery Smith, who she thought was all natural and wouldn't take any chemicals or drugs, had to go to CVS, and somebody joked uh, on uh, Twitter earlier, be right back, gotta go pick up my super soldier, super secret pills at CVS. <laughs> she would later find out that those were anti-anxiety medicines he was taking. She also mentioned in the first half hour that he, his hands were shaking the whole time she was with him. Which, uh, for those uh, who are perhaps naive or unaware, as she was, that is uh, the shakes and something someone gets when they're a severe alcoholic and they don't drink. Now... Uh, you know, I don't want. I think there is another situation where that can happen. Is it Parkinson's, uh, where you get the shakes as well? I share too many person. I'm not too sure, um, but yeah, having it wouldn't be the first time that we know someone is on drugs, is it? <laughs> we know someone else called Tyler's on drugs, and uh, let's see. Parkinson's disease, is it? Um, seems to ring a bell. Shakes. Uh, Pakistan. Pakistan. Uh, that's not your spell, is it? Disease. The disease, alright. <laughs> there we go. I got it spelled wrong. Pak. Got an R in it. Nervous system, yeah, so you've got to have the shakes on that, haven't you? Disease usually starts out slowly and worsens over time. You, sh you may shake, have muscle stiffness, and obtain your bounce. Certainly not uh, someone you want to marry, though, is it? Or have sex with and have kids with. Uh, is it... Um, Is it transmitted by DNA? Oh. What? Here we go, we're learning something new. <laughs> Have a family history. So family history suggests uh, DNA. They increase the risk that you'll get it. Having a first degree... Uh, Family member with Parkinson's raises the risk by 
two three percent. Yeah. Yes, there were also a vitamin or hormone issue that can cause a similar effect. Yeah, um, I think so. But uh, yeah, he's saying it's alcohol, but uh, maybe he knows something that we don't. Personal <laughs> things, but I will say this I grew up with an alcoholic in my home. It was, in fact, my mother, Irish. Yeah, and boy, she drank. And uh, if she didn't drink, she would get the shakes. That's uh, the level of her alcoholism, which would eventually, uh, unfortunately, kill her. She died from alcohol-related illnesses. So while I'm well aware that if you see somebody shaking, it's a good you know indicator that they're probably uh, a with, uh, an alcoholic in withdrawal. And it should be noted that when you are an alcoholic to the level that you get alcohol related tremors, uh, you can't just stop drinking. You could literally die, uh, which which means that his level of alcoholism yeah. is truly, truly a medical problem at this point. He cannot. So you'd have to have take pills to counteract it, which might be what, what he was going to pick up. Um, but then that doesn't count discount Parkinson. But then wouldn't you come clean on it? Hmm. Especially, uh, I suppose after you bonked a girl, you don't want to put her off. <laughs> I don't know. Um seems very really dishonest though, if you held that information from a uh, potential wife. Um what else was the uh, I was gonna say? Uh, there was something else, but I forgot now. <laughs> not stop drinking or risk serious illness or even death. So uh, while uh, it may be, uh, it may be perceived. Well, I've heard um, from abused wives that their husbands were drinking like a bottle of whiskey a night, uh, which I thought was ridiculous. I mean, they even consider. Uh, and yet they could function okay at work. So that means they must have been drinking a bottle a day for most of their life. And there can't be much of their liver and kidneys or whatever it is that gets damaged by it. Probably both. But then uh, John, uh, my ex-host, he said he was drinking a bottle of vodka a day. Yeah, that's pretty bad stuff. <laughs> Probably little drinks throughout the day, but it was a bottle a day. And he reckons his kidneys and all that never had any sign of stress. So uh, the doctor was amazed. <laughs> so he stopped all that and went on diet and uh, gave up drinking. Now he's living a normal good life, uh, which uh, is a good thing. But I think he's still smoking the old weed. <laughs> So he's going to have to get that up and uh, maybe live with the pain that he's got. And st but um, yeah, smoking is not always the best way to do. Um, there might be other ways to do it with edibles or whatever. But I suppose it's more costly, isn't it? And that's always a factor on things, what people do. That we're sort of making fun of Emery Smith and his misfortune of this girl coming out and spilling all his secrets about what a con artist he is. But at the same time, I have some empathy for his apparent uh, addiction. And what I would hope for him is that he gets to a medically sponsored detox and rehab program. He needs that. So let's um, skim on a wee bit because he's talking about that too much. Shirashi. And I also want to thank All Around Arbiter, who I somehow missed. At truth is that's his living girlfriend and had been his living girlfriend that he's okay, been living this is a good but he sums he, it up you know me. bang 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 and i guess he's barebacking her because he tells her that they're going to start having children right now the first day <laughs> he meets her he's going to start having babies and barebacking i mean yeah because that makes sense uh but anyway she lets him bareback him bareback her i guess and yeah she basically says she lets him bareback her so uh, she gets barebacked, right, raw. Uh, and, you know, I found it interesting that she made no mention of, of, 
of how anything went. Just that they, you know, like very matter of fact, like we had sex and he said he wanted to have children. Uh, okay, so you have sex. So uh, I guess they had sex a couple of times between Friday and Sunday. <laughs> and then on Sunday, she starts digging around and looking at Instagram posts of people that she knows are on Emory Smith's so-called team, right? And it turns out that some girl on his team was posting like 50 pictures of her and Emory Smith on a beach in Hawaii, <laughs> kissing on the lips together like a couple. She loses her shit, shows Emory Smith this. Uh, also note that this UFA dude's making so much money that you can be on a beach with other girls. <laughs> and he claims that that's some crazy bitch. Uh, yeah, she's just a crazy bitch. No, uh, I might have been drunk. I don't know. Uh, you, that's not my girlfriend. This girl asks him, is this your girlfriend? No, no, that's not my girlfriend. I, I'm not in a relationship with her. No, no. Yeah. Turns out. <laughs> even before I heard this third part that she just put up today, that I was right. And in fact, the reason that Emery Smith wouldn't return her calls or texts or pick up the phone when she called is because he had a live-in girlfriend. Not a wife, but a live-in girlfriend, which is just about, you know, the same thing, yeah. I guess. Almost. So, so it turns out that Emery Smith decides that she's a crazy bitch and he's going to get a restraining order against that crazy bitch posting these pictures of him kissing her. Yeah. Even though the truth is that's his living girlfriend and had been his living girlfriend that he's been living with for a year and a half. Right? But he tells this the, the side piece girl. It's, uh, it's amazing what length these uh, UFO cult leaders go to tell lies. <laughs> and people suck it up. Girl whose videos we've been sharing, he tells the side piece fiance that that's a crazy bitch. I, I'm not I'm not banging her. That's not my girlfriend. That's just some crazy bitch. But don't worry, because, yes, she, she works for me, but she's a crazy bitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get her a restraining order, and I'm going to order her to get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> crazy bitch. Crazy bitch. Emery Smith says this crazy bitch got to get the fuck out my house okay we gotta get this crazy bitch out because i got this new hotter side piece fiance that i want to keep so he <laughs> tells the side piece fiance uh, that he just barebacked he tells her i'm gonna get a restraining order i'm gonna fire her i'm gonna throw this bitch out my house tell her to get all her shit out uh yeah <laughs> that that did not go well for her for him as we're gonna hear because, as it turns out, the house belonged to her. It was in her <laughs> name. And he's telling side bitch that he's going to throw out main bitch while main <laughs> bitch actually owns the house and he has no legal right to throw anybody out of anywhere. Oh, it's great. It's a great story. So, typical cheating dude, he just tries to lie his way out of it. Yeah, that's not my girlfriend, even though he lives with her. Yeah, we're not... You know, you'd expect to be some TV show would take up the this. It's like, who are the hoaxes in UFO community, and do a whole documentary on all these frauds out there. Good, um, but yeah, and uh, this guy Emery Smurf and uh, Tyler Klotner and Blake Cousins. It would make a really good uh, public uh, documentary. And maybe people would wake up and then they'd say, oh, that book, the media has been bought by the government to silence our cult leaders. <laughs> you know, it never end. <laughs> They're just mental. <laughs> yeah, they certainly need to um, expose on public TV these guys, though. You know, they should get Project Veritas and to say... Do these UFO guys and make a documentary, and then people might start making, might might start thinking, oh, let's do more searches, see what we can find, and they might find the out there channel and find all my debunks as well. <laughs> uh, you never know. Eventually, it's all going to be, it's all going to come, uh, come out, isn't it? Someone's going to do something like that. 
Why is there no truth in ufology? Well, there's no truth on online ufology. All these frauds are making lots of big bucks out of it. Kind of relationship, even though he had been for a year and a half. This shit is crazy. So uh, I'm going to put my fair use banner. I think I got us caught up to the first half hour uh, at, into as the alien globe turns here, right? Oh, where is the fair use? Oh. And, you know, I have some other fun stuff to talk about tonight. It doesn't really matter if you put fair use up. Uh, Google's already said you can add it in your description, whatever. It makes no difference. People can still put a copyright claim on you and ignore the fair use. And they don't do with it. Uh, the court system does. How stupid is that, right? So Google, with all their money, they should use their lawyers to fight for everybody. All the creators shouldn't just leave you throw you under the bus, uh, which, which they did with my channel when Dr. J Radio put a false copyright claim on me. If we have time, uh, lots going on. Okay, so fair use. This is a transformative work. We're educating the public and critiquing the video that yeah, we are sharing. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is Google covered under fair matter. use and uh, is allowable by law. We are going to be discussing the video that we're sharing, and we're educating the public about Emery Smith, the con artist. So uh, this uh, video that we're sharing is entitled, I Was Engaged to Emery Smith, Part 3. <laughs> we finally meet, and the real truth comes out. But people will just say it's uh, like um, Billy Myers' ex-wife saying that he was faking models and all that, and no one believes them. So this is the thing with ufology. They're into so down the rabbit hole, they, they can't believe the truth when they hear it. <laughs> and they always find excuses to keep it going. Hey, at least she's easy on the eyes, guys. What can I say? <laughs> all right. He's a bit of a so, feeder, uh, we're going to go from here. I think we're pretty much caught up, but if we're not, I, I may stop and uh, explain further. But I think we're good. She kind of reminds me of that girl that was starving herself. Um, the Carpenters, uh, the lead singer of Carpenters. Right? She looks reminds me of that. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Listen, I've been having a relationship with this woman, but I was secretly planning on being with you and I was going to leave her for you. I don't know what, but if he would have told me the truth, things would have been maybe different. But instead, That's true. the entire conversation, Emery denied ever having relationship with this woman. And the side chat of this talking about the postal service. I uh, had someone in U uh, USA send me uh, some uh, US sweets, right? And... Not only has the box that he sent, um, they said that he couldn't send the whole lot. He could only send three pounds of sweets to New Zealand from America. And he sent it probably a good two months ago. And it's only just now made it to Japan. <laughs> and now it's been sent on towards destination, they say, which will probably end up being Australia. And then it will end up being there for a week and probably take a week get to New Zealand <laughs> but it's been taking that long uh, of course they would have paid good money for it too probably probably would have paid $30 or more postage a big box of uh, of it but he said uh, he bought so much he was just going to send the whole big uh, the whole selection off the shelf in the shop this is uh, one of the good people I know in ufology he was going to send all the sweets so I could sample all the Mexican ones and all that. Uh, he said it was going to be like a hundred pounds or something. Oh no, not that much. Uh, Thirty-five pounds, I think it was. It was going to cost hundreds to send it, and the post office refused. He said he could only send three pounds of it. So he, he gave all the other sweets that he was going to send me my way to a school. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so that was very really kind of him. Um, they're just going to do that for me. I wasn't expecting it, but uh, it looks like the school kids benefited out of it in the end. And uh, the post office almost gave them a heart attack because they couldn't weigh the box because the scales were going crazy or something. They didn't know how to use the scales, the software. Uh, and uh, he had to take a selection out of what they weren't going to send, which is kind of stupid. I've never had any problem uh, uh, trying to send um, 
like uh, five kgs to New Zealand. There's no limits on the weight, and it's scent free as well. So how can China can do that, but America can't? Uh, so yeah, the postal service is screwed in America, and that's because you got the workers right not working. <laughs> so it's, so they claim. No one wants to work in America anymore. <laughs> They're seeing the light that, uh, oh, yeah, the government can pay us. The billionaires, let's get all their money. Like I said, uh, if you, even if they are the richest <coughs> millionaire, which are about 10 of them, have uh, $200 billion, even if they gave half their wealth away, uh, everyone in America would have $300,000 each, uh, which would be enough to maybe... Uh, maybe buy a house somewhere <laughs> and live rent free. Um, so yeah, three hundred thousand though that would probably buy a lot more in New Zealand though. You'd probably better buy two houses <laughs> or one house and certainly have a wee bit of a holiday. But uh, yeah, just shows you the amount of wealth out there. Um, Bill Gates. Um, Amazon guy, uh, who's the other one's Google, <laughs> they screw all us at the bottom, and uh, they're all living nice lives, but yeah, this is Gil's uh, spilling the beams on this Emirat Smith, I'm not sure how much we'll play, we'll play a wee bit of it. He kept saying that she's crazy, he kept getting mad at me for even accusing him of such a thing. <laughs> he loves me. Hey, side piece bitch, how dare you accuse me of having another bitch, a main bitch, even though I do got a main bitch that I live with, how dare you accuse me of that shit? And he would never be with this person, and that this person's crazy, and this is his girlfriend, right? And I was so fucking... Confused. Sounds like a bizarre, yeah, it was bizarre. Three pounds, it. and I looked online, and, and there's no so, limit to New Zealand like, oh, for no, three pounds. Kind of, you know, we slept together I reckon the staff ago. didn't know oh, what we they were, were doing ever, ever, in the ever, post ever, office. Ever in a relationship. And he just kept... My well, Josh shouldn't be talking over the video. I don't think the post office uh, knew what they were doing. Because I looked online, there was no limitation ever to New Zealand on how much you could ship. I think they're just too lazy to do it, and tell the truth. That they haven't got enough airplanes flying, maybe, to New Zealand, because New Zealand's still got the border clamped down. Um, they knew it's going to take a long time to get here, but it didn't really matter how long it's going to take, did it? Um, in the old days, you used to say, you send it by seamail uh, or airmail, and you knew seamail was going to take three to six months to arrive, which was fine. And email you knew it was going to take two weeks. None of that even works nowadays. It's just that you post it and hope for the best. No, they couldn't work out the computer. Um, can't remember what he said now, but he said um, um, they put the the weight on at the wrong time. They had to push a button on the till for a certain payment uh, at a certain time so they had to probably weigh it and then push a couple of buttons on the till and once they figured out how to do it <laughs> he reckons he was there two hours just to post this box right he had all the money he had it all ready to go ready boxed he had to undo it all and take out stuff to meet their terms and then they couldn't get it working because they didn't know what they were doing and he's in Arizona. I said, well, yeah, well, uh, were the Mexicans, <laughs> were the UK uh, Americans, illegals working there or something? <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's done. So maybe they'll arrive tomorrow. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> They're in transit somewhere. He said they reckon they probably all sampled them on the way through. And I said, oh, they've probably added the uh, C-19 to the box as well by there, by opening it up. Because he was germ-free. So I probably have to be very really careful when I receive it, I guess. Uh, I don't trust stuff coming in the post, whether it's got 
virus or not. Yeah, uh, what's it? Yeah, I'm diabetic, but sometimes I take sweets you know, when it goes too low. And uh, I, said, I said to him, uh, I'd like to wonder what some of the American sweets taste like, because uh, it's pretty limited in New Zealand. Um, uh, UK sweets are quite nice, uh, but uh, it's been a long time since we were kids in UK uh, with the parents uh, sampling the sweets there, but we... I can remember the sweets were fantastic <laughs> compared to what we get in New Zealand. New Zealand's pretty basic, you know. Uh, it's probably got some of the best chocolate, though. Um, although even that's questionable now because they keep changing the recipe. I watched the documentary Why Things Are Running Out. Turns out 30 or so minutes later. TLDR. A lot of things are still at parts and just can't be unloaded yeah you need workers you need people that want to do the labor you know transport so anyway um enough of this lady out elton i'll just post the link enemy smith altered by a girlf new girlfriend. There's fraud. And the liar. Uh, stuck at ports. Well, shipping as well as airports, yeah. But also, there's a shortage. Um, I posted a thing on Twitter uh, talking about chip stocks uh, maybe I can find it uh, I know it's nothing to do with UFOs but uh, still uh, still interesting so Twitter yep don't know if I can find it or not Down here somewhere. There you go. Is that the one? Companies losing hundreds of billions. Global chip shortage. There you go. Uh, copy link. Have a watch that one. That's why you should follow me on Twitter because I post all sorts of things um, that might find interesting. Ship shortage. So if you want a new computer, you might have to wait six months to get it. That's what they're saying. And it won't be released till 2023 when they catch up. And there's only one uh, co uh, company that does it generally, it makes it. 90% of the chips in the world and it's in Taiwan and that's why China wants to take control of the country because if they take control of the country they've got control of the factory and they've got control over the world then ransom you for chips so that's a good reason to have a facility and people that know how to make chips in your own country so you can make uh, electronics certainly needed for weapons isn't it Tip shortage. Yep. That's the one. Anyway, have a watch of that sometime. Very interesting. And in fact, probably subscribe to them as well, actually, as well. Um, pretty good stuff they're doing there on that channel. Uh, Emery Smith, we did that one now. We're finished with that one. Uh, so, yeah, we've put this one off long enough. This is an update <coughs> that came out a day after, was it? On the UAP report from Black Vault. So, we'll play that. Greenwald Jr. here of the BlackVault.com. 
Last week, as you hopefully know, I released a video what I called my preliminary thoughts on the preliminary report on UAPs. Now, there was one vital key aspect to what happened on Friday that was not in that video. If you pay attention to me on social media, you'll know that I stressed a one page memo submitted by the Deputy Secretary of Defense was the biggest aspect to Friday's story. Yes, the report was interesting in some ways. Yes, it was a big letdown in other ways. But this one page memo is something that I feel is the biggest biggest aspect to Friday's story. Now, let me pull up my website. If you haven't seen this, it's on the front page right now, at least on June 28th, 2021, when I recorded this. Just go ahead and search if you don't see it on the front page for this title here. Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Assessments Memo Issued After Report Release. I had posted this on the 25th of June, 2021. Essentially what this is, is a one page memorandum submitted to all senior Pentagon leadership, commanders of the combatant commands, defense agency, and DOD field activity directors. This was from the deputy secretary of defense, as I stated, and it has the subject of the following unidentified aerial phenomena assessments. I'm going to read this to you guys just in case uh, if it doesn't really show on YouTube that that well, but I think it's good to hear it aloud. A recent report from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence highlights the current challenges associated with assessing unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAP, occurring on or near DOD training ranges and installations. It is critical that the United States maintain operation security and safety at DOD ranges. To this end, it is equally critical that all U.S. military air crews or government personnel report whenever aircraft or other devices interfere with military training. This includes the observation and reporting of UAPs. The report also confirmed that the scope of UAP activity expands significantly beyond the purview of the Secretary of the Navy, who heads the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, or UAPTF and suggested process improvements to ensure timely collection of consistent data on UAP. Consistent with these recommendations and to improve partnership with the ODNI and other non-DOD organizations, I direct the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security to develop a plan to formalize the mission currently performed by the UAPTF. The plan should, number one, Establish procedures to synchronize collection, reporting, and analysis on the UAP problem set, and to establish recommendations for securing military test and training ranges. Number two, identify requirements for the establishment and operation of the new activity to include the organizational alignment, resources, and staffing required, as well as any necessary authorities and timeline for implementation. Be developed, number three, be developed in coordination with the principal staff assistants. The to me, that kind of suggests they got what they wanted from the Congress, saying there was more money, right? Uh, to be able to fund all the extra th changes they want. But you got to remember, military bases are more the high security areas. They've got more eyes in the sky, more cameras in the sky, more radar. Uh, than any other location, right? So they expect to see more strange anomalies in the sky, which they call UFOs, right? Uh, so, yeah, um, maybe they see mistaken things in the sky too, like skinwalker rats, right? Um, like balloons and birds <laughs> and bugs, but on camera. So, yeah, unless it's like a witness outside seeing it from 500 metres away over a nuclear silo, it's a wee bit hard to say it's not a UFO, right? Either it's enemy drone or it's an uh, alien craft. But how can you say it's an alien craft? Uh, maybe because it's got advanced technology, but now it seems that... Um, the advanced technology, the Americans are saying that maybe Russia and China have got it, which is a bit scary if they have. So, um, yeah, it's like, to me, like, this stuff is like a, the Great Reset and ufology, like, what the hell did Blood Project Blue Book and all the other organisations do before then? It's like, oh, yeah, there might be some need for study in it now. Give us money, you know.
But you've been doing that for, what, 70 years? Now, I bet they've got some data there and pictures and videos, which we know they do have. <laughs> Already proven it can't be Russian and Chinese technology, right? Um, they've had these tic tats um, reported by military jet fighters going back a long time, even before 1990s. So, you know, did um, Russia have advanced tech even way back then? And why haven't they used it in wars? You know, so it doesn't make any sense, does it? Uh, they only need to emit uh, the extraterrestrial threat and it's game over. Or extraterrestrials. Yeah, all they need to do is now just uh, say, yeah, extraterrestrials, we've got a body on ice since 1947. <laughs> and then it's game over. And then people know they've been covering up for a long time. Um... I think really they're just trying to stretch it out for people that um, that may be still in, in control of it or may be still alive. They may be waiting for them to die uh, or wait for them to die so they can't be court martialed or their families be under stress and all that sort of stuff. I don't know. But um, all the pensions lost or whatever it is. Because, uh, yeah, uh, money, money, it's all about money, isn't it? Um, but uh, let's say that Roswell actually happened and they managed to create a couple of new crafts um, using materials reverse engineering it. They're not going to use those two machines in war, are they? They're going to keep them for the last... Uh, results, you know, and they may not be powerful enough to even have uh, weapons on it. So maybe that's why they're researching more advanced weapons nowadays, you know, plasma lasers and all that. Because uh, Israel only last year brought out a laser they reckon they can fire from country to country <laughs> uh, and, and take out um, installations with it. Because normally when a laser goes over a long distance, the atmosphere uh, disperses the light and it gets wider and wider. It's still a narrow beam of energy that can use for instant plasma heating. So yeah, um, technology progresses and the weapons are being made there. Uh, so they could launch that from planes as well. Obviously once they've got the laser working from ground to ground... And um, how they do that, I don't know, because of the curvature of the Earth. So there's some sort of high advanced technology going on there with Israel and other places. So why not? You know, China manages to have spies and steal stuff. Remember the FBI caught that guy that was leaking all the space shuttle and rocket science to China? And he had all copies in his basement. Uh, remember that article I, I read out? Uh, Probably last year, live stream. So, yeah. So this is a memo that's come out after that nine-page report. But as we started the show, Dolan reckons he's got the classified version of this report, which has got more stuff in it. Uh, which, in the case, he's breaking the law if he has. But it seems to me like it's just another trick to get more subscribers and money in my book and he's, he's promoting a fake document but time will tell we'll see what comes out um but yeah we just carry on with this because time's running out here for me as well <laughs> to present this. the chairman of the joint chiefs of staff the secretaries of the military departments and the commanders of the combatant commands with the dni and other relevant interagency partners all members of the department will utilize these processes to ensure that the UAPTF or its follow-on activity has reports of UAP observations within two weeks of an occurrence. To me, this is huge. And I'll say it again. The UAP report was interesting in some ways, a big letdown in many others. But this one-page memorandum essentially formalizes and instructs 
all Pentagon senior leadership and all the commanders of all the combatant commands to essentially be prepared that they will be taking in UAP reports. They will be looking at them or at least submitting them to the task force to be looked at and essentially adhering to whatever formalized process that there is that's going to be created. Now, why is that big? Because it's one thing for Congress to tell the intelligence community, mainly the DNI, hey, you guys need to do this report. We need to be briefed on UAPs. What are you doing about it? And that's one thing. But for an immediate action to be taken place by the Deputy Secretary of Defense to implement an attempt to formalize this process and to include not just the Navy, which seems to be, well, obviously spearheading it through uh, the UAPTF and, and that's where it's located, but essentially bringing in all other military branches and, and other agencies to get involved, to look at the phenomena, to submit within two weeks of an occurrence all encounters with UAP. What the UAP task force does next, well, that's not written yet that we've seen, other than the obvious, they investigate them. But to what extent? How much access to the U does the UAP task force actually have? That's a big key question that I don't see a lot of people really talking about right now. But when it comes to, let's say, government top secret classified technology, do those involved in the UAP task force have access to that? Do they have carte blanche access to everything and anything that they want? And I don't have the, the answer to that. But if they do, and they still come up empty on trying to identify these things, that would be huge. And that is huge, given the report says that the majority of them are all unexplained, with the exception of one. So they all remain unexplained. So it comes down to the key fact on whether or not the UAP TF has proper access. But this particular memo, if they don't have access already, will hopefully give them that access. Will hopefully allow them to access all information they need to truly come up with some kind of conclusion, some kind of viable explanation. And if they can't, then they take the next step internally, whatever that might be. But they're dealing with obviously a unknown or unidentified phenomena. So what happens next, which, and, and again, to the public realm, we don't know yet. It's unwritten, uh, so to speak. We don't know. But this memo formalizes that process. And that gets the ball rolling with not only the U.S. Navy, which, again, we just keep hearing over and over about, but everybody. And that is going to be fascinating to watch unfold and gives me a heck of a lot of FOIA fodder to go after. But <laughs> So he's happy because he's got lots of work for his channel because he's like the FOIA expert, right? I think he's released some other information recently too. So now he can do searches for emails between people on this topic, I guess. So who would you target though? <laughs> um, yeah, whether you'd find anything useful. Where they're covering up. Uh, it's frustrating, isn't it? But I think he's uh, recently tried to get a FOIA request on the latest Corbell one, which we covered last time, I think it was, with the airplanes landing. <laughs> and they wouldn't give any response to it. Uh, I think you can go and see, see that one on his page here. But we won't play it. Um, this one here so I'll just give you a link to that uh, black vault uh, story follow up on nine page reports so obviously things are happening for the military side of things where they're changing processes and uh, also and uh, they're cl collecting big data on incursions, is that what they word for it? Where stuff is detected from outer space, detectors, and uh, seen by radar, and all other things, and sort of track object that might be coming down from space, which doesn't necessarily mean it's alien, it could be related to other countries still. 
where they fly up into space for long range and then come back down. So um, they should be able to use that for big data collection and use it for prediction of when the next likely event is going to happen or whereabouts it's going to happen. A bit like uh, that Bigfoot show, the Bigfoot uh, Expedition Bigfoot, where they're using big data to predict the next um, sightings will be. And they go to those locations and stake it out, which has been quite successful for them. So they just need to apply the same thing to UFOs, uh, which would have made make sense, wouldn't it? But if you've got real-time sensors and radar, which uh, those guys haven't, it's not like you can track Bigfoots, but you can certainly track uh, stuff flying around the air. And you can know all the flight paths, all the call signs, which we can't do publicly, but uh, the Amer Americans would have all the extra data or flight paths, all the military planes, so that they can add into that uh, flight radar data. And they could then know if it's an unknown craft. It's got no call sign and moving fast, blah, blah, blah. So they should be able to track it and have, like, um, uh, action teams that fly up. But like that uh, sci-fi, uh, UFO, it was actually called UFO, um, that TV show. There's no reason why they can't do it like that. UFO. Um, TV show. Uh, is that one? British sci fi. Shadow, was it? Or whatever it's called. Uh, Gary Anderson. But using actors, not puppets. It's been around for a long time. Shadow, shadow. So I suppose it's, uh, it's got a well, meaning to it. Good sci-fi. We've not seen it, <laughs> but again, the aliens are enemies. <laughs> uh, Fret. Uh, you probably could find it on string channels now. It's so old. Uh, still popular though. Space 99, you might remember that one. Come out around about the same time, was it? Uh, the same there. I'll post a link to it anyway, and you can do research on it. Shido, Shido. Organization, I guess, is the last word. Space. Anomalous <laughs> discs, I don't know. Shido. Uh, let's see. Uh, Why is the search not working? Control F, isn't it? Shadow. <laughs> 90 references. <laughs> okay. How do we go to the top? I happen to do that. Yeah, it doesn't make it easy, does it? That's useless. I didn't know there's going to be that many. Probably say here. Here we go. Supreme Headquarters Alien Defense Organization. It's not a really good name though, is it? Um, alien Defense. There you go. And next one. Ah, uh, so this one's from UFO Proof. Uh, well, I've got enough time to go over it. To probably, maybe start on it anyway. Uh, so here he's got this new leak, and it's not even from Corbell. New leaked military UFO video. Clickbait, clickbait. Uh, how many views he's had? Is it almost a thousand? UFO shot by Sidewinder missile must be seen. I think he means must see. Ah, uh, so let's go over this one. I think I know what it is. 
and uh, I don't think it's a leak of your face, but um, see what you think. I'll just mute it because he talks over it. And we can just watch it uh, if it'll let me. See, it's gone too small. Uh, let me see. Go full screen. Okay, so these are meant to be AK UFOs. And that one's dropping stuff of it. Obviously, it's got to be hot because it's on thermal. Uh, is, it, is it finished already? Uh, let's play it back again. Uh, why is it not playing? Oh, he's got intro. There we go. Okay, so what does it look like? White sands, maybe? It kind of looks like the white sands uh, proving ground where they test out missiles and stuff. Okay, we've got four UFOs in the sky, or have we? On thermal. Out of focus. And focus again. And there's something that flicked by us then. Uh, so what are they doing? Still filming it? Okay, what happened there? That one seemed to dip down. So are we looking at a real video or CGI here? So you could always consider CGI on the list. Remember I was talking about the debunking list. CDI, CGI, UFO. Now they seem to have zoomed in. I uh, don't know if we can get any fat zoomer. So we'll just zoom in a wee bit. That one's leaking something. So is that one. So is that one. Okay, uh, and then something comes and whacks them. And they're still leaking. Uh, so what do you think the uh, flares that are dropping um, drips of heated metal, which are flares are use a bit of metal and other chemicals, and that's why they're showing up on thermal. Or are they balloons? Uh, like Chinese lanterns, they're leaking some fluid. But had they withstand a missile launch, so we we'll go over it a few times. Leaking, leaking. But I don't expect. I would expect uh, flares to be leaking stuff all the time, right? So it's more likely it's going to be flares than a solid craft. Because we're not seeing the real object, right? We're only seeing the glare, the heat. And, we, and the other red flag is we don't see those then fly away at the end. Uh, you'll see. So there are a few red flags. Now, does it look like it's got lines running up? See that? It's got something above it. 
Okay. Looks like some sort of connection point above it. And that one's got the same. See that? So let's just uh, look for all sorts of clues on it. Uh, we're only going to see things that are hot, of course. Um, or hotter than the background. So there could be anything above it. Uh, like um, another balloon. Or a drone that's uh, got a cable running down with something hot at the end, like a flare. <laughs> Makes sense for all the dripping. Uh, it'd be good if they had uh, TV mode, but like the Nimitz, right? Now UFO proof is uh, saying in the background there that these are UFOs and they can't be shot down and they're leaking molten uh, stuff on the ground. But why would UFOs be doing that? Makes no sense whatsoever. Unless one's damaged. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. We inverted it today. Try to zoom in, but you can see there's definitely something above it. Now, my gut feeling is this is a um, proven ground for testing out new uh, calibration targets. Because in wartime, uh, they've got to calibrate their big guns as well as um, artillery, as well as missiles, right? And they need to. Uh, also do a few test fires to make sure it's, the equipment's working <laughs> and they put up some decoys and obviously missiles work by heat and they normally drop cluster flares on parachutes but this might be something new where it's less w wasteful and uh, quicker to, to to deploy in a war zone for so he was saying this is in a war zone but there's no proof of that, of course. Uh, he said it's in Afghanistan. So just zooming in now. Yeah, all the reports of UFOs dripping stuff has always been disproven, though. The Maury Island thing was a hoax. Um, uh, most people agree it was a hoax. And uh, the characters involved had a very really dubious backgrounds. One was a um, XCI and ran a. a, a <coughs> so there was a magazine writer, a fate magazine writer. I suppose we covered it in the past. Uh, go and see the. Breakdown with Robert and, and I talking about it. Uh, What's the other one dripping stuff? There was another one that's claimed to drip, found some dripped um, molten rock in, in the desert. Again, that could have been uh, from a crashed uh, experimental craft, right? Uh, aluminium tends to melt in very big flames, as you saw in, in the 9-11 the crashes. And you could see there was molten al aluminium pouring out in one corner of the high rise. So that was the plane melted down, right? And of course, if you throw water at heated aluminium, it oxidizes into a big explosion. Which um, they believe the other explosions was uh, the, water, the fire alarms spraying water on the molten alloy, which kind of makes sense. But no one actually investigated that side of thing, apart from one guy from UK, I think it was. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, so we're not actually seeing real objects here. We're seeing the, the heat signature. So to say it's melted metal dripping down, 
Um, it's all theory. <laughs> And there was something above these, so they zoomed in quite far there. Now, what are we looking at here? Zoomed in. Uh, looks like some movement down here, is it? And how come these things ain't zooming around or shooting off vertically, right? Now, I noticed they changed positions. Weren't they like a, a U shape before? So this one, these ones have dropped. Um, which you'd expect on parachutes, wouldn't you? So maybe they were on parachutes coming down really, 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 really slowly, right? But on cables that go up to the parachutes way off the off the video here, which and of course they blend in with the background because they're not hot. So maybe they, they had like larger parachutes on them, and they're just taking a long time to come down. All right, and we know that uh, flares burn go out after five minutes, and this video is in that time frame, right? So. Lots of red flags here for being disc flares on parachutes. Or possibly even drones. That can fly and change them in different locations. For five minutes, right? <laughs> so why would you use drones uh, instead of parachutes? Well, I suppose you could keep their position more solid. But who knows, they might be coming down really slowly here and dripping. And that was it, right? We didn't see them fly off or do anything unusual. Now, I thought maybe we could find out if they're doing experimentals where they're, not, uh, where they're using drones with flares for targeting now. And sure enough, target drone come up when I did a search and they've been using target drones going back since war times is what they call them so and they got ones where they launch these drones up remote control and then they try and shoot them down for practice list of target drones there you go look quite a lot of them Going back quite a while. Queen Wasp. Have we got any pictures? Uh, just a load of words popping up. Oh, here's one. DRDO Abyss. A high speed expendable aerial target. They call it Heat. <laughs> So that one looks like a missile. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. And the list goes on, right? So of course that might not be all the current ones they're working on. Uh, here's no one. F9, Cougar. The Gunman. Phantom 2. There's a tandem two seat, two engine, all weather. Deceptor and fighter bomber. What's that got to do with target drone though? First entered service 61. Yeah, but uh, isn't the list uh, target drones? So I don't understand. I don't understand why that would be in the list. Uh, those ones look like they could be for targeting. Uh, missiles, chase down and blow up. Of course, they're not going to tell us everything, are they? F-16 fighter. 
Well, that wouldn't be a drone, would it? So I'm not sure why they've added those in the list. Uh, maybe they, they can fire off the drones uh, for counter uh, measures, maybe. Uh, have a look through the list if you want to. So could it be a new, new generation of target drones that can have a, like a 100 meter cable underneath with a flare attached on the end? So if the missile hits it, um, it just makes an explosion, but um, maybe the explosion is not enough to take out the cable. Or maybe the drone just simply drops another one and then lights it in the same location and you don't see it happen. So let's go back to that video and re-watch it again. But um, after searching that, because I'm trying to see if there's any experiments out there, I've come across this one, 2019, October. US military bought Chinese-made drones for target practice. Bingo! <laughs> Wouldn't that make sense? Uh, trying to take them down, but also maybe instead of having cameras underneath, you could um, have like a, a flare bay under here with 100-meter uh, strings with flares attached and just... Once you drop one, they light for five minutes, and if they blow up, they blow up, and then you just drop another one. It makes perfect sense to me that they would do that. Um, but also, they want to be able to take down multiple drones at the same time. So, wouldn't you fire a missile that can... Uh, maybe it wasn't a sidewinder in that footage, but maybe it was uh, some other type of footage. Some type of missile, I mean, not footage. <laughs> uh, where it can hit one target and then take out the next target close to it, uh, like multiple heads. So let's have a look at this again. See, uh, they're definitely at a U shape there, isn't it? But who's to say? There could be a string that goes up here to a parachute or a drone that we're just not seeing, and the parachute's these are going a fair distance away and it looks like they're not moving at all right uh, but we can see them dripping as the flares right and have you ever seen flares when when you light them they drip all the time uh, heat not necessarily dangerous heat because you get hand uh, flares for the hand right flare burning So we've got to apply common sense to this uh, before we start calling them UFOs. Uh, for starters, it's a leak. We don't know who the source is. So an unknown UFO channel that uh, has been caught for family crimes. It's, it's a criminal. You can't trust anything he puts up. Uh, and uh, Cool Bell didn't release it. <laughs> who you would expect to be releasing that sort of stuff, right? So you can see here the handheld flares, uh, which we haven't got a firm on, but they do create a lot of smoke and drips. I probably need to go in military flares, probably. <coughs> it's got. Um, <coughs> All rigs, isn't it? Uh, this one, it's quite in a ball shape, finally. But you can see little bits dripping off. Uh, you need to see a video of them, I suppose. Um, and you can see that one's got a lot of spits coming off it here. Uh, what's that one? Drone designed to carry a burning flare. Well, there you go. It's got a drone underneath it. Yeah, don't worry about dinner. I'm all right. Okay, so... Looks like my time is up. I've <laughs> been told to order for dinner, but I'm not really hungry. Uh, let's see. I need military flair added into that, I think. But I will wrap up in a minute. Military... 
like I said, there's a lot to cover all the time, and I never get through all of it every time. So, I just have to keep doing shows <laughs> to cover it all. Uh, to do an analysis on it. So, here's military flares. Look how bright they are. They leave a smoke trail, which we don't see on the thermal, but they do drip. Now, what's those ones there? Uh, those troops, what they're doing. And yeah, look at these ones here. These are the ones they use for anti-missiles, right? They're like big sparklers. It's lots of smoke, uh, a lot of dripping. But uh, to see that in thermal... Uh, would be the king thing to see, but uh, we're not going to get it, are we? You can see all the bits coming off here. And you can see all the bits coming down that one. So it depends what type of flares they are, of course. And it's over a desert, so obviously nothing's going to burn there. So, parachutes, drone, uh, drones. Uh, what else did I find out? Now, I'll post that one about the drones here. I don't think they've got any experiments with flares, though. That's all we got. This little blurb on it. Drones bought for target practice. You were saying. And that was uh, end of 2019. Now we're a couple of years on. You expect them to still be using them for various experiments. Okay, let's see this missile hit again because it's kind of strange. Uh, if it hits a flare with the explosion, it's not going to do anything, is it? Just, but it should maybe sever the cable, maybe. Uh, but that's uh, hearsay, right? If it's a metal cable that's da dangling on. It might be a more Teflon or some sort of cable they've got that's repellent from heat. Uh, it may not do a damn thing. It may just swing around behind the thing and not do anything. Um, let's have a look again. Dripping, dripping out of focus. Now, what was that that flew past then, you see? That could have been uh, maybe a drone that even dropped them on parachutes. Uh, there's all sorts of possibilities. Might have been a plane. You'd have to slow it right down and capture the framework, I guess, and see if it was a jet fighter that dropped them. So they could be coming down really slow, couldn't they? Um, bush. So why would it get two? Was it by pure chance? Because on the right angle for debris? Or was it like a new missile which shoots off multiple heads? Let's see if we can get that again. Now, I don't know where he's got the video from, else I'd be playing the original video. Actually, it looked like two separate missiles, didn't it? Uh, one hit there, and there's another one that was behind it to hit that one. So that makes more sense, doesn't it? Uh, maybe they're trying to customise the software. So it can ignore one and but go after the other because generally they're stupid, aren't they? And they normally just home in on the hottest source. That's why flares work. 
I, I think it's just the experiment. Uh, what was the other stuff I was going to do? All right, cool bell. Uh, we're done with that one. <laughs> I might use uh, that for the cover page, though. Eh? One of the graphics. <laughs> I'm not sure if I kept it or not. I probably didn't. Yeah, so if he's got classified documents, he's in crap, I'd say. <laughs> Um, yeah, that'll do. Close that one down. See, um, what happens is there's this new format uh, when you save. It's called um, some strange name, right? JFIF. -F. Instead of calling it JPEG, and then they call it that new extension, because uh, at least the software now knows they call it that doesn't recognize it as a a graphic anymore which is damn painful <laughs> but that's uh, YouTube for you and other websites uh, let's see how long we got uh, I suppose we could finish up so yeah whether we come back to that one or not I don't know um, initial look at it anyway but I don't think it's UFOs. I'll post the link to UFO proof, although I think it's garbage and people shouldn't be subbing to them. Yeah. Uh, he's just trying to make money from it. UFO proof claim oh, for UFOs. Most likely flares on long strings, parachutes, or drones. Now, why would it survive a hit from explosion? Well, flares, um, Maybe it didn't. Maybe there's another one that dropped down <laughs> as soon as that one took off and it was lit up in the same place. Mind you, they sort of look like they've lost some steam after that hit. Let's have a quick look at that again. Uh, were they bigger? Bush. Uh, uh, actually, it looked like they did actually um, knock them off. That one looked like it was going down here. I think they must have dropped another one from a drone. Let's have a look at that slow motion. Well, it could be edited, of course. Uh, we haven't considered that, too. That it's been edited to make it look like they survived the hit. Uh, we have to see if we can get it where the frame is. Okay, looks like it even missed it, right? Yeah. So what's these? Could it be CGI even? Almost looks like CGI, doesn't it? And we did keep that on the list. Flares or parachute, flares or drone, or CGI. They're the top three contenders. So why did they suddenly appear there? Um, uh, it doesn't look quite right, does it? So there's something not quite right there when it gets attacked. Uh, I think someone's heaven is on. I wonder what QVID thought of it. Uh, is QVID out there? Maybe when I re-air this on YouTube later, after dinner, uh, we'll see if he pops around and, and talks about it. I did invite him along to help me debunk it. 
but I never heard back on Twitter. So you out there, Qvid, you need to get on Twitter more often. Yeah, something not quite right to you. Yeah, it looks very really CGI then. But anyway, have a look at it. And uh, we can always come back and recover it. So I'll leave it there for the time being. Okay, Goofon put this one, this photo out, and I thought I'd have a look at it. He says this is a UFO that he caught in a widescreen snap of um, a view over a mountain. So it'd be on a viewing platform. First thing I thought was, oh, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, is it part of the cloud where it's lost uh, the blue sky colour? Uh, due to a glitch in the battery or something as it was processing. Kind of, kind of looks like a hole in the cloud. But then when I started looking at it a bit more, I thought, hmm, kind of reminds me of a security camera, doesn't it? Uh, so you can actually see look, looks like maybe a hole hole at the front here where the lens is and it's on a dome that rotates around and that bit rotates around and the rest of it is the base which goes up upwards here to a pole which may go across the top of the viewing deck and he may have just cooked and forgotten it was there so I run it through some enhancements uh, that's enhanced so it kind of looks like it's got uh, a camera hole here you know going up and down doesn't look like a UFO it looks like it's got some reflection off the side here rather than that being like uh, part of the cloud where it's lost the color information which NASA sometimes got too uh, from transmission errors, but this should this should be on a memory card, right? Uh, but yeah, but because some of it's look hazy here and it's not like defined enough, still quite could be cloud cover. But again, it looks like a security dome thing. So I thought it'd be something like that. You see. So two possibilities, and that was the the zoomed in bit that's out of focus. Uh, it could be because the enhancement has made it blurry there. There's not enough information to go on, but it does look like it's regular shape, doesn't it? I reckon it's a security dome. And you guys on the side chat reckon that's a camera on a pole too. <laughs> So yeah, I know, like I said, I, I didn't class it saying for 100% sure I've left it with maybe a glitch in the camera or a CTT camera to keep an eye on the tourists jumping over the edge or whatever. <laughs> but you can see here how, how small it is at the top. And that would be, you know, you wouldn't have the viewing dick in a way, would you? Um, you would have it on a post coming out from the viewing deck facing the people. Kind of looks like it might be there in space, but uh, we don't, because um, we don't know what's above. And I don't know what the location was, but um, I think it was on this episode here. And you can go and watch it if you want to suffer. <laughs> Uh, watching goof on, but you better find the part you're after uh, near the end here. Uh, when the website uh, here somewhere it was. Uh, let's see. There it is here. So I'll just post the link to goof ons anyway, and uh, go and check it out. See if you think it's a camera. <laughs> <laughs> One that spins around 360 view, yep. Yeah. Goof on claiming he's meant to be an expert, guys, but I'm just looking at from a non biased thing, thinking, well, could it be something on the end of the camera cord that he was taking a picture and it flicked up, or 
uh, bird, you know, just go through the list. But to me, straight away, camera thing stuck out and or cloud artifact. Because um, some of the older cameras back then did have firmware bugs and did have uh, CCD things that sort of sucked the battery dry as well. And then the pictures wouldn't be safe properly. I used to have pictures that were all sort of crazy uh, bits in them. So it's possible. Um, the thing is, we've got pareidolia. Our, our brains always look for pareidolia, right? So there you go. You can go and check it out if you want. Um, uh, UFO proof you got. Uh, why is that bigger than normal, though? Because we had trouble before, and now it's bigger. Before it went smaller. <laughs> now it's too big. Uh, yeah, just wanted to bring up one thing here on his. Uh, this thing here. Uh, he's totally wrong. <laughs> Um, about it being camera artifact. This one's definitely not a ca camera artifact. And I just want to bring that up lastly and then finish up for the night. There we go. So I'll pay from there. Flying cars. Look. I w you know, that's why Sundog. It's the best one I've ever seen. That's crazy. That is absolutely insane. That's from Twitter. Yes, it's a sun dog. Usually this happens in cold weather. Mm hmm Pretty amazing. That is not a UFO. Hey, you see that shape? Hold on. You see that shape right here? That's the same shape that we see in the George Knapp that I was calling uh, possibly um, the flash of the camera. You see what I mean? It's reflecting from inside of the camera you can even see another circle in there. That's what this is. You can see a perfect circle. This is the <laughs> camera lens inside the phone. No, this is not the lens. This is uh, all artifact of the weather, the whole thing. Uh, I think even people down the side were laughing. Uh, now he said at the start it was sun dog, and then now he's saying it's internal camera that uh he's not he's not he's wrong <laughs> unless he's trying to unless he's uh using the wrong words uh i just wanted to point out that it's not a camera artifact that's just um halo 22 as it's called um creates that uh, yeah, it's, uh 25 degrees i think it is uh, no, 22 degrees <laughs> i mean <laughs> from the horizon it happens at a certain height all the time and that would be um, uh, ice crystals that reflect the sun either side and top and bottom and they say that's what happened with that um, that print you remember they had the print with the 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 sort of like triangle shapes happening that was that um, the experts said that was a like a pictation of a sun dog that day um, and because it's strange very strange weather patterns and um, people were saying it was early ufos of uh, sphere, spheres and uh, triangles uh was it 1571 or something like that uh 1571 ufo probably got the wrong date if you got the wrong date it never comes up it's probably 70, 1700 probably uh here it is it is the right date is it <laughs> that's scary have i got the right uh 1561 oh, i wasn't too bad 
Because I'm not a UFO historian. I don't keep these dates and facts in my head. Well, this one here apparently was Sun Dogs. Um, it's even got the sun in the middle. But you can see it's got all these funny shapes. Uh, stuff that you see with Sun Dogs. You know, ice crystals. And apparently there was an explosion, one that crashed. So could it be multiple events? Like uh, maybe there was a meteorite shower that happened in at the same time, creating the sun dog effect. You know, if it goes through the atmosphere, and it was like a cold, cold day, uh, you might have like two events happen at the same time. Uh, so yeah. Can't remember that was what was that called? The celestial phenomenon. Uh, Nuremberg, Germany. But uh, yeah, apparently there's other examples of this uh, wood carvings for newspapers where the, they'd carve it out and print it. And they reckon the the guy that printed the story exaggerated it to try and scare off. Um, Visitors saying that that, that was uh, they, they had um, they were worried about the black plague at the time and they were worried that uh, this this event if they make it sound worse than it is could scare off people uh, fleeing from the cities who are dying from black plague and coming to theirs <laughs> which kind of makes sense uh, in a way but this guy here is saying this is camera artifact let's see if we can find some other sun dogs. And you can see, uh, this, they've got the same shape, you know, the same location, horizon, uh, making the circle. So it's nothing to do with uh, camera artifacts. You can see there's another circle that goes on the outside. And um, they have certain names for it, so where you need a diagram that talks about it. But there's uh, 22 degrees on Earth side of the sun uh, there's a lot of technical mathematics involved in it <laughs> let's see um, is there any picture and of course you need the right conditions ice crystals uh, what a stupid page why won't it get rid of that <laughs> uh, there we go no That must be the story. No, that should go right, left. It won't. Okay, it's useless. Pretendica. Some dog Wikipedia. Maybe that's got something. Has it got a chart? So these are early pictations of it. It's very really similar to that 1561 that I was talking about. Uh, another another one here look look at that one multiple things you can see why they'd think it was uh, gods and stuff so that's 1535 sun dog painting it's got the little spheres happening although i can't see the triangle ones in that one uh, so lots of periods where they've got it documented So yeah, 120 perihelium, is that the one that goes on the outer ring, is it? A crown flash, a false sunrise, sun appears to be setting into or have been set below the horizon, yep, fog bell. So these are all sort of mother nature atmospherics that happen, it uh, confuses people. But they all got different names in the thing. But it's nothing to do with camera artifacts anyway. Uh, so don't know if we got any diagram. Explain that. So here we go. That one's got something. So that's a sun dog. And that one must be another sun dog over here. Uh, Halo is set going around the outside, which is calling the camera artifacts. 
22% is the angle from the Earth to the Sun, is it? And observer, from the server to the Sun, 22%. So have we got anything else here? That one's a complete uh, halo. Pretty cool though, I've never seen one with my own eyes though. And they're all sort of varied somewhat, aren't they? Mm. Look at this one here, look, that's crazy. And that one's got a rainbow happening. That looks like it's below the horizon that they're talking about. And this go on and on and on. But yeah, it's nothing to do with camera. <laughs> but we'll just let, have a listen to it and then wrap up. Behind glass, this bright light, which is the sun, is bouncing back towards the camera and recording it. You understand now? That's why it's there. And you notice how it dissipates when he gets when the sun is at an angle, not directly on. Hey, that's what we do here at Goofon. We teach. <laughs> See? See? Whoop. Anyway, good. That was lesson number ninety-one at Goofon University. By the way, you can look it up in. Uh, yeah, I don't think you're right there, Goof, unless you're trying to explain something else in that picture that no one else is getting. Um, but, uh, yeah, unless you study the comments, a lot of people were laughing. Uh, where was it? Uh, he's probably been deleting the comments. <laughs> no, it's not. It's saying actual sun dog. <laughs> he's laughing at Goof on saying it's a camera artifact. Uh, it has nothing to do with camera lens. See, someone's got some sense here. Sick, attack me, but. Uh, in the files. It's nothing to do with the lens. All right. One more video before I get into this tweet. Yeah, let's see. Carry on a bit. Why is the comments on the side stopped? Now, oh, that's stupid, isn't it? Yeah, there was more under it. Let's just uh, refresh that. No, we're not going to see it. All right. Year 51, uh, 52, 33. If it was true, anyone would not be standing there staring. So everybody's looking at it, right? So if it's a camera artifact. <laughs> uh, so yeah, obviously, Gifon needs to correct. His university paper there. Oh, here we go, we've got the comments going now. The A is seeing the same thing the camera is. <laughs> They're trying to tell Rufon he's wrong exactly area 503 there's two people second area 503 <laughs> uh, I think they say a few more comments after which are kind of funny <laughs> uh, I think they said it's the most stupid thing they've heard from Goofon yet <laughs> There you go, ice crystals, 
in the atmosphere cause the double halo, correct? That could, what's it saying? That quite could quite possibly be the dumbest thing I've ever seen on this show. Amen. Oh, Finally, people waking up. Uh, what happened to my sizes again? That's not my Zoom thing's not working. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, if you want to go and watch that, it's at 40 minutes. On that link I posted on the side chat, I'll have to repost them uh, later when I re-air on YouTube. But anyway, I wanted just to correct that and talk about this photograph here, what I thought it was. Um, I'll post a link to that so you can have a closer look at the photograph as well. But it's on the uh, on the link. Twitter pause debunk. Uh, he said he was going to put it on third phase, so watch out for it. Camera or not? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, mate. Uh, I've got to go too. <laughs> He's gone and I'm going. And we're left with those two again. Unless someone wants to bring more information about that. It could be CGI. Uh, maybe Scott Brando would do that one if someone sent it to him. But those guys don't listen to me, so they probably won't look at it. So someone else has to do it. Uh, I'm just going to wrap up. I went on longer than I wanted. Again. Uh, good night and take care on the roads, everybody.